So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live stream with live people recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. I'm working in my Mythomorphia colouring book by Kirby Rosanne and this is the French version because I think that came out first although I didn't plan that. I'm working on the Green Man. So I'm going to use um, my beautiful vintage set of pastels. I'm using some really nice muted greens but I have given him some very bright yellow eyes some cadmium yellow bright eyes and I've blended it in this pastel and then I'm going to take a number two rigger um, and all I do most of the time is dunk into water and then twist it to a point on a baby on a damp baby wipe and that's how I work and so that's just barely damp any wetter and you will crinkle your page I think I just dropped some water on there did I Perhaps. and then I'm just going to very carefully stroke very quickly over the top and that has now become a watercolour technically it's not a watercolour but it's acting like a watercolour and in a moment it'll be set so it won't move now so I'm going to zoom in so we can see a little bit more detail how we do things. If anybody's got any questions, pop them in caps. And um, just look away a second. I'm just going to pull that down there so that... I'll move the camera very slightly. And zoom in. They look almost like flames, they don't look like leaves, but I'm going to pick things off. So I think that's kind of like bark and kind of woody. And then we've got these leaves kind of shooting out from there. So um may have to oh no, I'll do that bit first. So we'll do this this forehead, and I think it's wood is this but I want to do it in kind of lots of kind of muted colours so I have um, a piece of paper that I've been practicing some of these muted colours on that I quite like and there's some really nice umbers and sepias and some really nice uh, kind of bark colours and if I look at the green umber, I think green umber is going to be quite nice. And this vintage set has three shades of one colour. So we have a green umber 38B, green umber 38D, and a, three, and a deep umber 38F. And I think one's for faint, one's for deep or depth, and one's for bold. And so those three colours have the same name, but they're slightly different. So what we could do is, it's actually a lot of work's been done for you. So where the shading's been done, you can put a little bit of the darkest. And then we can put in the middle and then the palest will be where the, where the kind of the highlights would be and it's a bit of a small space actually so maybe we just just get kind of maybe a medium and a pale And then there's the space up there. So I'm still blending. So what I want to do is fill the space completely. So I don't want to see any white. I want it all to have a little bit of colour on it. So there's no white space paper. You can't see any paper. And what that going, that's going to do <coughs> is... Excuse me, but I've got a, a bit of a chest infection, so I'm uh, a little bit croaky today. 
and uh, try not to cough. Trying to fix all that into there. So you just want to pick where you think it's going to be the palest and when you think it's going to be the darkest and then you do everything in between. And then when you've filled out a bit of the space, oh well done Claudia, Claudia says she's got a rigors coming um, and she's got her Cotman watercolours already mixed and ready to go. That's fantastic. And that's waiting for Miss Morphia, is it? <laughs> yes, we waited quite a while for that, but it's well worth waiting for. I was, it was like, it was more exciting than getting the bunnies. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the palest and I'm going to blend the palest in first and then do it in small sections, it's always a little bit easier because you can you can work out what you're doing by the time you get to a bigger space. And then we kind of blend that. And if you go over the go over the lines, it's not not a dra too drastic at this point. So again we've got that going there. And then I've actually got rid of quite a lot of dark in there, so what I want to do is just, you can't always do it, in fact I'm going to go dark I think, no, I think that might do it. You only get one chance at going darker really. Little bit of a little bit of um, shape going on there is the best word I could, I could say. And then what I tend to do is use my electric eraser. But if I want a very very sharp highlight, I change the blade or I switch it out. And I've switched that one out twice. So in my little dirt one art bag. I have but I found a set and then I found another set so I can rather naughty. So these are kind of if you're doing shapes, but when you're doing a highlight, you want a sharp edge. We're not going to get a point unless we waste a lot, so but a sharp edge is just as good. And after a little bit of practice, you get quite good. So you're not really wasting them. Now sometimes you can get paintbrushes that have, um, sorry paintbrushes, you can get pencils that have erasers in them and you can sharpen those but I like this one and just want to just kind of just carefully just kind of and I was going to actually do, do the fixing as I went along but I don't know if I want to I think I might want to, to finish and then get some more highlights and shadows I may I may have to leave this and do it like the Harry Potter one because I think I might want a little bit darker shadows in there <coughs> excuse me oh that's a good idea Claudia says she runs the eraser over over sandpaper to get a point to get an edge or to get an edge yes it's quite good you can get a really nice edge so when you need to do that now you just have to use a very soft brush which seems to have disappeared just to brush off oh excuse me <coughs> i knew i'd start to cough Having joined Slimming World. I'm sipping. 
the smallest glass of wine you've ever seen. <laughs> you know you're getting old when you can only have one glass, but one glass is good for you. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm trying to stop the cough. Um, so um, I think I may want to leave this. I do love that. I quite like that, but I might want to leave it until I've done all of it because then you can see the whole page and you make the whole image and then you might want to kind of really put some highlights and some shadows down so i'm not actually going to fix it but if i did fix it i would just run the damp brush over the top <coughs> oh, excuse me in one and that would that, that would then the eyes are uh, set the eyes because i just stroked over the top now i can do that again <coughs> and excuse me and i said it was a watercolor it was a watercolor um it's not a pencil a pastel anymore it's completely diluted and dissolved in water and then it's dried evaporated <coughs> oh, excuse me i think i've made some dust so we're going to go back in there. I think these are going to be green, actually. So they're going to morph into into green. So we do need that eraser again. <coughs> Excuse me. I knew the second I started to record, I would cough. So bear with me. So we'll take that out and that out and that out. And I went over the line there a little bit there. Excuse me. So I think I'm going to go in there with the leaves, and I think I want some olive colours. These are olives. Um, I think these could be maybe a paler olive rather than a a rich. <coughs> oh, do excuse me. If I can't stop coughing, I'll have to sorry about that. Right, <clears throat> I should be quiet for a moment. This is the colour I was thinking about. Oh, I like that. Oh, do I want it for that colour? I like those olives. <coughs> um, so this one is olive green. And then I've got bold and I've got faint. I think that might be nice for the big ones. I think that's for those, but this is a little bit darker. These are dark olives, so there's three dark olives, there's a the medium. So it's, sometimes it's a good idea to have a bit of a scratch and a bit of a play. And you can you can blend them if you want. So we can blend these together and have a bit of a look to see what they would look like. Now I normally like those to be this one here. But I think I like the paler ones because they're bigger. These can be bright green. So sometimes it's a good idea just to have a bit of a look. So these would be the paler ones and they would be the olive ones and they could be the very very pale ones there's a may green a very pale may green that's nice so we'll have a look for that so if you've got any questions <laughs> i knew it would start <clears throat> i knew i'd start coughing suzanne right so Again, sometimes you have to have a bit of a play so you can you can have a look and think well the bark is is kind of um, the bark I've done is as green umber I think I kind of like those as a, a little bit of a darker green I think I quite like this color so I might not actually put I might do. No, it's too brown, is that? That's too brown, really. So 
the dark olive is too brown so again the beauty of this is if you make a complete boo-boo you can erase it it doesn't always completely disappear but it's not so bad I actually want a bit of a I kind of want a bit of a green color so if I have a look at all these gorgeous greens there's a terra verta oh that's quite nice um, and there's three shades of that mm, I think I like this one I didn't want it to be too green again just stretching a little bit of color where the grey shade, the grey shading is and I think I might only just do two two colours kind of eyebrow green on there <clears throat> clean the, the blending tool because you don't really want to contaminate it uh, start where it's the palest and then blend and it is a bit of a small space but you should get a nice bit of a highlight if you start where it's the palest um, and you've got to remember to do the palest first really otherwise that green's quite strong and although you're scratching colour you don't want a line of colour you want a little soft circle a little mark but not a defined mark because if you do a defined mark you will get a defined colour you won't get a nice blend and I think that one actually is all dark it should be paler because it's not got any shadows in it but because it's behind it's got to be darker so I quite like that and then of course that leaf is this one coming out so again sometimes you've just got to have a bit of a think about what's going on is everybody okay So again, I quite like that, um, and there seems to be this a different leaf. It's this pale one coming out here. It's a different one, so I don't want that one in the same. I think that's supposed to be the eyebrow. So um, we'll travel over to the side and do the same thing. So we want a bit of dark where the dark is. should be dark and then the pale excuse my wonky chair it keeps cranking when I move I've got to be careful though because I have to keep fidgeting but I've got to be careful because I always catch off his feet because he is supposed to be on his little blanket but he tends to go forward a bit and the next minute I know he thinks he's under my stool uh, under the under the foot of the chair so so we do the, the pale ones first and then drop back and manipulate those and that isn't my hip cracking it is the chair <laughs> keeps things my hips cracking I like that. I don't think that might be a bit of a morph as well. So I think we'll put a little bit of dark on there. I think so. No, I think I, I think that's wrong. I think it, it's sometimes you've just got to look. It's not. It's actually. 
actually part of his eyebrow I think part of his brow and I was doing the brow this colour I think we might just get away with it a bit of a shadow on there so it was choosing the side it's definitely not going to blend that together so I like that, I think that looks okay. So all this wood would be, and bark, is going to be the the green umber. Um, I don't think there's many more of this particular leaf. The thing is you've got to do it now while you've got it in your hand, otherwise you forget what it is. There's some dragonflies, there's three or four dragonflies. Um, there's a bee, so there are actually things hidden in there. There's some acorns, so they're obviously going to be very pale. Then there's the curly, um, the curly leaf, which is like a, a moth, uh, not a moth, a fern. So that can be quite bright, that one, because it's like a forest fern. And I just found a caterpillar, and there's some very pale green, so I think I'm going to do that on that pale green. So I can't see any more of that one, so I'm going to put that green away before I get into trouble with having all my pencils in it. So I don't think I have a 78. Oh, I do have a 78, so that one goes down there. It's just a little bit easier if you put if you put them back. I think I'm going to do um, these next here because they're different. Um, they're not going to be. I don't think they're going to be wispy like that. I think they want to be kind of a bit a little bit paler and probably more green coloured. Seems to be more greens over there than those on there. There's a hooker's green, which is always quite bright. Emerald green, I think I'm going to do that one. There is a forest green. That's the forest green, if I get my little piece of paper. I think I'm going to do the ferns, the forest greens, because they're kind of really nice. Um, Then the green should be that one. So it, the the most time you spend is messing about trying to find colours that you like. And sometimes I kind of change my mind three or four times before I'm a happy girl. So we have a bit of green on there, so I'm not going to do that too much. So I think the greens want, all want to be slightly different and in this set there's quite a lot of green so I think it's going to look quite nice. So just a subtle difference and then we need to go to a kind of a, oh, maybe a stem, that was like a green, um, be a dark stem. the line there a little bit. Oops, I think we go right up there as well. Look. Sorry if I'm off camera. I've just seen that. So the other one must curl up there as well. And yeah, it does. So that's going to go all the way around there. And then we need to put it, put it away. It's in the hand. And then I'll put some quite dark ones behind. Let's 
say that's the wrong one. That's the right one. Because it's all good too. Sometimes they trick you into changing your shapes. So I made a mistake there. That does not want to be that colour. It's a bigger leaf and it's completely different. And I think that one as well. I'm going to take that off as well. Actually, I'm going to put it back in. <laughs> no, nope, that one is in. It's very strange. They've drawn one differently. I don't know why they've done that. Oh, never mind. So. A bit of a blend. And again, another way of working, you just go around picking them off and colouring them in and then you go pick another one and change the colour slightly. And, um, just a subtle blend. So of course it was a lot darker but when I blended it in it, it doesn't appear to be that much darker but just that little bit. Again, going back over here, finish this, finishing this one off now. So you can still manipulate this colour around a bit. I wasn't sure about that leaf, but never mind. And then the stem. So I seem to have gone over quite a lot, but I'm not really going to connect, correct that because at the back it's all going to be darker. That is going to be the palest. So whatever I do behind there is going to be okay. If it was something lighter, then I'd take it off, but there's no real need to because it is going to be darker. I built up some really nice darks under there. <clears throat> to start getting a little bit careful because it's now blended so it's not set so we probably could do to put our hands on the tracing paper and it's probably a good thing to get into a habit of doing on your page because a lot of hand, natural oils skin oils can can sit unseen on your page and then when you put colour on them it'll react so it's probably a good idea to always have a little bit of tracing paper you can still see where you're going but it just protects your work <coughs> thank you MQ sorry I was coughing there thank you addicting not addictive it's addicting <laughs> <clears throat> you have to apologise for the squeaky voice it's normally a little bit better than this I'm just thinking I might do those the same but I'm going to do um, so I've got I haven't got the palest hooker's green this is actually the palest so we could kind of really make these pale And then the medium, the medium one. And normally it's the stems in the middle, but I think we'll be a bit different. I think we'll put, put the darkest in the middle.
I don't know what time they were visiting home actually because it's see. <clears throat> So sometimes you can't actually see what's going to happen. I think I might just leave. Can I put a cream so you get some really nice soft blends? I do like the soft blend. I think it looks it looks more natural. I think probably. And this is my cheats version instead of blending with thousands and thousands of pencils and just using two or three and I can I can just about cope with that but of course the pastels are so pigmented you've got all this wonderful color to play with also quite light those they look quite good and again if you want to do any more highlights when we've finished we can go right you know we can take most of the color off if we want to so we can either do it now to remind ourselves that you know we would want a really nice kind of highlight on the edge Maybe if we make the other one darker and move those paler because they're smaller. So we can get some really nice effects. Um just got to remember if you remember where you put it, <clears throat> the little brush to brush away. All the bits um, so I'm going to put the brown in there so that I know what I'm doing so I'm going to put that brown in there because I quite like that so we'll do some more to the forehead and we can join that look a bit up so at least it looks like I've actually been somewhere so it's fairly quick but it's just it's not a race you go at the pace you want and you do the areas that you want to do I mean I, I do that sometimes I might not want to think about doing um, anything particular and I think oh you know I don't really want to do that now so I kind of put it off a bit and then you might think oh actually I think I might want to do that so where where it's very where there would be a highlight I put the faintest where there is cross hatching and it's showing shadow I put the darkest and everywhere in between I put the middle one that's roughly how I do it so if there's any cross hatching we get the darkest color and then I go back in with the middle color if I think I've got all the highlights and again I might use a darker one to get some really deep shadows between there so most of that's coloured in I can just see some little tiny bit oops tiny bit just put a little bit more but it doesn't really matter because this pastel spreads quite nicely so I've got all that colour there and I'm going to clean my blending tool because it's green <laughs> so I don't want a green forehead now so I'm going to again go in the, the palest one first actually I've missed a bit there it's a bit of dark in there Playlist first. Just make a bit of a soft 
and you're not rubbing the paper out you're just gently pushing this across that's about the the pressure you want you're just pushing it but because it's a blending tool it's kind of creating a little bit of a te texture and te um, tension so it's kind of grinding that colour in a bit and not leaving it sat on top it's not pushing over it it's pushing it in kind of thing <clears throat> it's a bit when you put foundation on if you're putting if you're putting face cream on you're kind of rubbing it in a little bit but you're doing it gently that's basically what you what's happening i think whereas if you're painting you're actually putting eyeshadow on you're not rubbing it into your eyes you're just letting it sit on top so there's just a subtle difference of how this blending technique works. And again, I've got one or two natural highlights, but I can go in there and just take off. And remember, less is more. It's got a real frown on there. <laughs> so, oh, hi, Judy. Welcome back. I'm just going to, um, whoops, if I can zoom out a bit so you can see where I've got to. So we've kind of got the, I've got one or two highlights when I want them. I've got some different greens going on. I know I want this different green as well. Um, I think I said I wanted that one, the very dark forest green. The swirls, these are kind of like an oak leaf because of course he's got acorns falling over him. So. I think we wanted the olive colour for that one. So let me look back at my olive colours. Um, there was a dark olive. <clears throat> there was a, a dark olive. That's a, great, that's a dark olive. Have a look. the dark olives because I don't think I've used them yet oh, unless I've used that one's the green umber no I think that's the green umber so the green umber was the <clears throat> Yeah, so I haven't used this one. It's very similar there. They're very similar, but there's a little bit more dark about them. I would have liked them slightly greener, but there's a may green. I don't think, no, I think oh, I think they're kind of I think they are darker colours. Maybe I should have done this one for the for the bark and that one for the, the they actually probably would be better. Mm, yes, I think that's probably better for bark and that's better for the olive leaves. So I have two choices. I could take it all off. Or oh hi Judy, welcome to Ellie's Designs. Oh, thank you, Claudia. Thank you. Um, I think I like that for the acorn leaves. And I think these are going to be more barky colour. So I'm just going to do his nose in these and then decide. So again, just a bit of a highlight. Um, and then the dark, the darker tones. And I think this is what's going to make it. I don't think those...
acorn leaves are going to want to be that dark. I don't know, but I quite like that. Should just have a bit of a play. See what happens. So there is a subtle difference, and actually, I like that colour. Is a little bit greener, so I'm, I'm right. I'm going to use that colour for the leaves. So all I have to do is just take it off. It's not going to come off completely, but it's going to allow me to get another colour over the top. So sometimes you have to do have to have a bit of a play. So it's this one, and I, I think I like I think it's gonna have it's gonna be a, a bit of a contrast because one is a lot paler but we'll do one and then I think there's going to be just enough difference that it's going to look okay so again we blend doing the blending tool got to make sure that that blending tool is dry though otherwise it will set the work and you'll have a line so we can work that gorgeous green colour out oh I quite like that one just slightly different but it's slightly greener because this one is dark olive and the other one is green umber <clears throat> so we've kind of got that browny green bark but when we've got that greeny brown leaf and again we can get some gorgeous highlights on those we don't have to stick we don't have to stick with that Can be as, as as good or as bad as we want. And then you can still manoeuvre it back again if you've taken too much off to make that lovely soft highlight. Remembering to brush off that. Quite like that, so I've got that sorted. And we've got these little pale flowers which I really like. And <clears throat> I think I'm going to do them orange earth. So I've got three orange earth. So again, I take the three colours and I just have a bit of a play. So we can do one of two things. We can scratch three little bits or we can just scratch a tiny bit of colour at the bottom. With the darkest, excuse me, with the darkest colour. Make sure that that blending tool is very clean and get rid of all that grey and green. And then you can just manipulate a tiny, tiniest amount and then just a small amount and it, it, so you can have the tiniest subtle colour or if you want thinking well actually I do want a bit of difference you can do it that way we don't have the luxury of too much but you know a couple of little 
scrapings of colour. And again, very little difference, a subtle colour just to go with that subtle grey. So Orange Earth is really nice for that. And of course it's aptly named Orange Earth. I think I'm going to do that bud a little bit stronger. Because it's a bud and buds are always a little bit strong, a little bit stronger. And again, we can always just take off a little bit of a highlight of the tips if we wanted. So we've got some acorns, and acorns are funny colours, they're pale and dark, so I've just had an idea. They kind of had like a... <clears throat> Just the wrong colour. Oops, sorry, brown oak, brown ochre. Mm, I think brown oak is quite nice. So again, just move up there slightly. I don't know if you can see that. So I think they have a darker middle than they do husk. So it's almost like the orange earth. So again, there's not going to be, they're all going to be kind of muted, earthy colours, which I quite like. So we've got another one of these dark olives. So we want the middle, sorry, the outside. So we're thinking of highlights here, so highlight, dark tones, definitely under there. And then the middle one is everywhere else. stopping by guys sorry everything's a bit uh, tipsy oh my goodness me it's gonna be trouble in a minute so hope you're having a pleasant afternoon we're missing our wonderful raucous giggles listen to my dulcet tones i think somebody once said <laughs> dulcet tones. lulling people to sleep i quite like that it's actually brought that little one out now quite nicely and again if you feel that you want a highlight on something you can just kind of but i'll be playing with that more as i go along as in, you know, he would be more of a shadow, so you can build the shadows up as well. Just to give a bit more realism. But when we finish, his eyes should actually quite, quite nicely shine. <laughs> so these are really nice to work with, these pastels. Quite easy and really nice. So just let me put my brain into gear. The brown ochre was the, and the orange earth were the flowers. I don't think I've got, oh, there's another flower there. So again, we've got a little bit there. And again, I forgot about everything being pastel.
This is the first time I've had my pastel in my, all over the place, but <clears throat> down there and I've got to um There's a little ladybug there. Um, can you come here, please, pigs? Right. So I've got things ev everywhere. Um, I think I may have to call that a day because I think the dogs are kind of a little bit restless, and I can't I can't walk them, but I can I can open the door for them. But I have to bribe her. <laughs> So I hope you like my green man. Now, just bear with me two seconds. I'm just going to put that out there. Oopsie, so you can see my green man. You might see the colour slightly better. So he's coming along. I quite like some of the works. Um, again, don't forget grease with paper, children's, and your little... Um, and that will smudge. So you've got to remember that's pastel, so you need to shut that really if you're going to put it in your colour book. Um, I don't normally work with pencils everywhere, but as you can see, they're absolutely everywhere. <laughs> they're everywhere. The lighting is slightly better when I do that. So thanks for joining me. Very good. Oh, thank you, Judy. I'm sorry. I'm just. Oh, they've settled down now. So as I say that, oh, she's actually laid down. Bless her. I just get worried that when she starts trotting around, they, they wind each other up. Um, but I like these colours, so I've, I'm quite pleased. I've got some nice soft colours with these pastels, and I've got some quite bright colours. So even if you just had one set, you could still do quite a lot of different things. So I do like that. Oh, thank you, Judy. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Oh, hi, Caroline. I missed you coming in. Sorry, darling. So, um, thanks for stopping by, guys. Hopefully, the videos might be better because I was getting a little bit cross with them, uh, with the internet and things. So, um, that wasn't too bad on the hands. It's when I'm using that little paintbrush, it's, it's just a bit much. Um, so they're quite good to use on your hands because they're quite chunky and they're very soft so you're just scratching a little bit of colour and then you're just kind of rubbing it in a little bit and so it's quite a nice easy way to work I'm just going to actually rechange that nose because we I changed the colour and it looks odd so I'll change it back again so we just have a little bit of pale and a little bit of mixture oh gosh that frightened me to death <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> the blue tack gave away i've resorted to blue tack and then we'll make that little bit of dark in there Take out the blender. Let's see, that's not the blender. And I can make the ones behind a bit darker so his nose is going to stop pop out a little bit. So. Doesn't look the right colour, but I'm sure it is. sure i think it's the right color and it's really good because a lot of the color's been done for you so i don't know who's on next i'll just say thank you for thank you for so i'm going to cough <clears throat> thank you for watching and um if anybody wants to see anything uh give me a shout and uh thank you for liking and subscribing my videos it keeps me going so thanks ever so much for watching 
So thanks guys. Um, I'm not sure who, oops, have we stopped? Come on, stop. 